I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. Today's video will be a spoiler-free book review of the Third Secret Project novel by Brandon Sanderson, uh, You, Me, and the Nightmare Painter. There will be no spoiler regarding the content of the book, but do know that I will be sharing uh, three interior images uh, inside the book on this video review. This is mainly only to give those who still haven't got the chance to buy the Secret Project uh, novel in hardcover edition, the Dragon Steel edition, the opportunity to take a look at the artwork before deciding to get them or not. And the interior illustrations I share inside today's video review, they won't be spoilery. They will be from the early section of the book. So yeah, let's get started. I have a lot of things to say regarding the Secret Project novel, and in my opinion, this was utterly brilliant and satisfying. You, Me, and the Nightmare Painter will be the best of the Secret Project novels, and it is easily one of Sanderson's uh, finest books in his career. Since its announcement, the third Secret Project novel by Brandon Sanderson, You, Me, and the Nightmare Painter was already on my list of most anticipated books. It is my most anticipated books out of uh, all the four Secret Project novels. This is mainly due to two reasons. First, Sanderson has mentioned that Hikaru Nogo by Yumi Hota, the writer, and Takeshi Obata, the illustrator, is one of the main inspirations behind this new Cosmere novel. And Hikaru no Go is another childhood favorite of mine, and I knew this would bode well for me. And the second reason, Ali Chen is the designated illustrator for this book. Ali Chen is one of the best artists I have come across. You do not need to hear my words on how amazing she is at her art. Check out her artwork portfolio, or to put it more simply, read this book and witness her illustrations. Suffice it to say, I had high expectations and excitement going into this book. And still, I was astounded. The inspirations that gave birth to this novel are all stories I cherish. I, as some of you might know, love video games, anime, manga, and books. And as it turns out, not only Hikaru no Go, but the anime Kimi no Nawa, or Your Name in English, and the video game Final Fantasy X influenced the creation of Yumi and the Nightmare Painter as well. And as a big fan of Sanderson's Cosmere books, plus these three main inspirations, this is a knockout book for me. Art is about feelings and emotion. It's about letting them escape so they can be shared. It's about capturing a truth about yourself, like you're ripping a hole in your chest and exposing your soul. Two locations, two protagonists, duality, contrast, and cooperation are evident in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. In the city of Kilahito, a world of darkness, technology, and nightmares, Nikaro, or Painter, works as a nightmare painter. While in Torio, a land of light, gardens, meditation, and spirits, we follow Yumi as a traveling Yoki Hiju, a rare priestess capable of summoning and commanding spirits to serve Torio's inhabitants to rituals and stacking stones. Suddenly, an event unpredictably intertwined their lives together in ways they never imagined. In Torio, Painter now appears to others as though he is Yumi, and Yumi turns into a disembodied spirit visible only to him. In Kilahito, the reverse situation occurred. Both of them must put aside their differences and work together to learn each other's jobs and skills to uncover the mysteries of their situation and save their respective communities from a predicted imminent disaster. That's pretty much the premise. And if you have read or watched Hikaru no Go, you will see the intentional similarities here. In Hikaru no Go, the main character, Hikaru, finds a haunted Go board someday. The Go board is haunted by a ghost named Sai, the emperor's former Go teacher in the Heian era. But Sai doesn't have a physical body of his own to control, he is dead. He is trapped in Hikaru's mind, and he tells him which move to use every time Hikaru plays Go. You can probably imagine the several frustrations that came from Sai and Hikaru's circumstances. This is the kind of dynamics and struggles Sanderson implements into Yumi and Painter's story. The story is once again told through the narration of Hoyt, but do not expect this to be done in the same voice as Hoyt's interest of the Emerald Sea. It is different and it works amazingly well for the atmosphere and the narrative. And I should really point this out, even though Hoyt is narrating the story here, 
This entire book is without a doubt Yumi and Painter's story. We read from their point of view like usual, we hear their thoughts and we feel their emotions. However, we get the occasional commentary, interruptions, and philosophical musings from Hoyt. For me, there was never any dull moment in this book. Even though this is a different kind of Cosmere book, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter remain Sanderson's storytelling at its prime. Even in Trash of the Emerald Sea, which I highly enjoyed, a few sections in that book felt a bit dragging in my opinion. This wasn't the case with Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. It was thoroughly compelling and it was so incredibly well paced. I applaud other readers who managed to start and finish this book in a day or two and then proceeded to immediately talk about the book in detail online. Granted, I failed to prolong my reading of this book as well, but I certainly savored every page and upon finishing it, I was left dazed, charmed, and positively bewildered. I still am at the time of making this review. I was mesmerized by the build-up, execution, and entire narrative that led to a form of Sander Lange finished by a hugely satisfying ending. Do not expect actions or battle scenes here. A form of Sander Lange is existence in the last portion of the book, but at its core, You, Me, and the Nightmare Painter is a relatable, beautiful, and charming slow burn story about the connection and relationship development between two individuals with different personality and upbringings. And yes, I absolutely love the two main characters, Painter and Yumi. Although Painter and Yumi are characters of opposite personalities and background, they have attitudes, mentality, and struggles I can relate to. I read Miss Brown Trilogy for the first time in September 2016, and although it's almost seven years since I read Sanderson's book for the first time, I still think to this day he is one of the greatest authors when it comes to characterizations and development. I found Painter to be a genuine character. He strives to fix things, to do right. The issue he's dealing with revolve around loneliness, his own value as an individual, and the insurmountable pressure he faces. It's not exclusive to Painter. I find this to be so relatable to our society. Often, but not always, we are valued and treated based on what service we can offer and provide to other people. If we fail these services, the result can be devastating sometimes. Dismissal, ignored, oblivion. These were several issues Painter is dealing with, and that resonated a lot with me. I assume other readers will, too. His insecurity, his aspiration to be needed, to do good, and of course his passion for art. Yumi, in her own way, encounters this issue of having her value determined by her service as a Yoki Hijo. She follows tradition as strictly as possible, with no room for freedom. Because of this, for me, Yumi did take a bit of time to like as a character. Initially, she was uptight and strict with her ritual and rules. This, however, does not mean she ever behaved out of character. This first impression is strength with the gradual character development she went through together with Painter, which gave rewarding results to their relationship and, more importantly, the reader's reading experience. As I said, compromise and empathy are some of the main themes in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. Also, if I'm not mistaken, the name Yumi is most likely inspired by Yuna in Final Fantasy X video game. Yuna works as a summoner and is one of the two main characters in Final Fantasy X. At the same time, the name Yumi matches the name of one of the creators of Hikaru no Go, Yumi Hota, the writer. Tidus, the other main character in Final Fantasy X, is a blitzball player. Tidus, a blitzball player, and Yuna, a summoner. Nikaro, a painter, and Yumi, a yoki hiju. This is practically where Final Fantasy X came in as an inspiration for this novel. There are a few similarities between the pair Nikaro Yumi and Tidus Yuna, and I loved it, especially the slow burn romance between each pair. Some of you might already know I am not a reader of romance novels, and yes, this book can definitely be categorized as one. But Sanderson definitely handled the balance between plotting, mystery, characterizations, world building, fantastical aspects, and romance. The romance never overwhelmed the other spotlights of the book uh, for me, and I will argue that the romantic scene here is relatively few. I understand each reader's tastes are different, but from my analysis, only someone who despises having any tiny moments of romance will most likely hate this book. The majority of this book is just about relationship development, building characters, understanding each other, it is standard human connection. It is believable and it is well written. Life is not made up of a few colors. It is brimming with multitude of emotions, good 
or bad. Relating to how Tidus and Yuna complement each other, Nikaro and Yumi bring their missing colors and puzzles to complete each other. Not instantly, but gradually, through hard work, effort, and patience. And I love the two of them, assuming we are not talking about teenagers. I personally think Sanderson is excellent at writing romantic relationship between characters, Vin and Elon, Wax and Asteris, Suri and Susebron, and now Nikaro and Yumi. This is also precisely why I tend to prefer slow burn romance over insta love. I'm not saying insta love is not believable, but in books I read, I tend to prefer connections being nurtured, navigated, and fought first before the two characters in question become a couple. Through Nikaro and Yumi and their interactions with the supporting characters, the resonating themes of friendship, loneliness, freedom, responsibility, the need to belong, and art shines through. As you can expect from Sanderson's writing, his prose remains accessible, engaging, and vivid. Although some readers have felt dissatisfied with Sanderson's writing style, I always love his writing and storytelling style. His writing is just so vivid and scenes are always easy to visualize in my mind when I'm reading his books, with emotionally impactful and hard-hitting passages placed at the right moment. One of the things I love most about reading, illustrations, and art in general is the feeling of being impressed with human creation and creativity after experiencing the emotional effect of the art. A cooking machine that succeeded at creating a delicious noodle will never top the feeling of me being awed by a chef cooking a delicious noodle for me. Or even better, I cook the delicious noodle for myself. Similar to the Emperor Soul novella, another Asian-inspired fantasy story by Brandon Sanderson that I cherish, one of the main themes of Yumi and the Nightmare Painter is art, its creation, its recipient, and what it means. For these reasons, this is why I always prefer human-created art over artificial intelligence art. I want to feel awed and amazed by the story and illustrations painstakingly built by a fellow human. Intentionally or not, Sanderson handled this uh, topic and theme magnificently in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, and it is one of the big reasons I adore this book. Everything about Yumi and the Nightmare Painter clicked with me. The mystery was intriguing, the characters were lovable, the world building was intricate, and the writing was compelling. And as an Asian reader, it goes without saying that I have an affinity toward Asian-inspired fantasy books. The anime Your Name is one of the inspirations behind this book. The well-realized world building in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter is Japanese and Korean inspired. Japan and Korea are two countries I visited in the past for holidays, and they remain strong as some of the most memorable experience for me. And through this experience, Kilahito really feels like modern Tokyo, probably going back a bit in the past in my mind. And honestly, I thought the setting in Yumi's story was too. However, Sanderson has mentioned that Yumi's world is inspired by historical Korea rather than Japan. And Sanderson, as proven in The Emperor's Soul and now this, is bloody good at writing Asian-inspired fantasy books. The clothing, the setting, the cultures, the food, the eternal night and day, the azure and magenta, it is all so atmospheric and imaginable. I hope Sanderson will contemplate writing more Asian-inspired fantasy books in the Cosmere. As usual, when it comes to reading a new Cosmere novel by Brandon Sanderson, this question will be asked. Which books you must read before you start reading this? I'm happy to say, for once, none. Yumi and the Nightmare Painter can be read and enjoyed without reading any other books in the Cosmere uh, universe. Hear me out, I am someone who is very sensitive about spoilers, and yes, first-time readers of Brandon Sanderson or Cosmere will miss out on the Cosmere terminologies and who design is if they start their journey here. But honestly, if the reader hasn't read uh, any of the Stormlight Archive yet, none of this actually count as spoilers. A relatively very minor spoiler too. I'm caught up with all the Cosmere books and the knowledge I had from reading the Stormlight Archive did not significantly enhance my reading experience of this one. Some readers will and have argued you must read up to Rhythm of War before reading You, Me, and the Nightmare Painter. I understand the sentiment, but this is a bit crazy. The effort and reward of doing this are imbalanced. You cannot possibly expect readers to read 4,000 pages 
currently almost 2 million words long of books to have a small benefit in reading this 110,000 words long standalone novel that would make Yumi and the Nightmare Painter as a standalone novel inaccessible to many readers, which I'm pretty sure is not Sanderson's intention. This is a standalone novel. You will benefit from reading other books in the Cosmere first. You will understand the Cosmere connections, no doubt about that, especially the Stormlight Archive. But a requirement, I don't think so. From now on, I will actually recommend Yumi and the Nightmare Painter as one of the good starting points for those who want to jump into the Cosmere for the first time, especially if they are looking for a standalone novel. Lastly, Ali Achen, the illustrator behind Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, deserves a standing ovation. No offense to Howard Lyon and Steve Argyle, the illustrator behind Trash of the Emerald Sea and the Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England. I love their contribution, and their illustrations were compatible with the books they were in charge of. But based on my experience, history, and preference, Alia Chen's illustrations reign as the best out of the secret projects so far. It is my favorite. And I think Alia will still reign even after the last secret novel is published. Some readers might consider Alia Chen fortunate to have the opportunity to work on Sanderson's books. The way I see it, it is the other way around. For me, well, I am a happy spectator. Sanderson's book is now filled with one of my favorite artist's illustrations. I have nothing to complain about here. Similar to my experience reading Sanderson's books, I have been an enthusiast of Ali Chen's illustration for years. This collaboration feels like a match made in the Cosmere. No words are sufficient enough to convey how much I love the stunning artwork in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. The lighting, the facial features, the characters, the tones, the mood, everything was superbly done. That feeling of finding an artist delivering illustrations that captured or exceed the quality of my own imagination always feels like a blessing to me. And that notion has been achieved here. Alia's artworks undoubtedly elevated the overall quality of Yumi and the Nightmare Painter to a higher plane. A picture speaks a thousand words. Including front and rear end paper in the equation, there are 24 interior illustrations inside this book. I have shared three of them in this review. As for the rest, you have to witness them for yourself. Stories like this are a necessity for me. While it is true that the book is devoid of massive epic fantasy battles, conflicts, and political intrigues usually found in other Cosmere books, the book Yumi and the Nightmare Painter triumph as the best standalone novel by Brandon Sanderson. For me, this top over Elantris, Warbreaker, and the Emperor's Soul. Wholesome, romantic, intimate, atmospheric, immersive, and timeless. The three main inspirations, Ali Achen's illustrations, and Sanderson's brilliant storytelling and creativity are a union resulting in the immaculately crafted Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. The book intensified why Cosmere is one of my favorite fantasy universe. We decide what count as art, books, painting, illustrations, manga, anime, storytelling. We have the freedom and power to place a personal and intimate value to any specific art. And for me, the value of art as incredible as Yumi and the Nightmare Painter is priceless. So thank you so much to Brandon Sanderson and Emily Sanderson for sharing this story for us to read and emotionally experience. Oh yeah, that's, I think that's uh, the end of my thoughts and review for Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. As you can probably tell, I absolutely love this book. Everything about it just click with me on every level. And if you have read this book, do let me know what you think about it. Is this your favorite secret novel project? And what do you think about the illustrations inside this book? And what are your thoughts? What are your overall thoughts regarding Yumi and the Nightmare Painter? There is only one secret project left here, and I'm very excited to read that one as well. I'm curious to find out whether that will actually top this one or not, but this one has the potential to become my favorite. It is one of my favorite books by Brandon Sanderson, one of the best books of the year. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.